What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Hot Sauce. This is Angel Planel, a registered dietitian nutritionist in Seattle, Washington. I just cracked 100 subscribers, and the goal is to make it to 250. So do me a solid and like, comment, and subscribe, and let's get right into it. Today, we are going to feature David Wiss, a registered dietitian that resides in Los Angeles, California. All right, well, welcome back to the Hot Sauce. Today we have a special guest. This is a good friend of mine. I've known him for many years. This is David Wiss. He is uh, gonna get in the hot seat today, so I'm gonna make him big here. And we're gonna go ahead and give him the mic. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to us, tell us about your journey into the profession, and uh, the floor is yours, go. Awesome, I appreciate your commitment to the field so much. You have such a passion for dietetics, and I just love how much you've been able to contribute to the field. And I want to thank you for having me on the show today. I am Absolutely. a registered dietitian and have been so for uh, nine or 10 years. I did my internship in 2012 and became a dietitian in 2013. Immediately started a private practice called Nutrition and Recovery, which is essentially nutrition for mental health, focusing on addictions, eating disorders, uh, trauma, depression, anxiety, et cetera. And that's been my full-time gig for the last nine plus years. And about five or so years ago, I did go back to school at UCLA to get a PhD in public health with a minor in health psychology. I was uh, working full-time through the PhD program. I sort of had to keep that kind of on the low. They want you to be full-time. So I was doing two full-time gigs at the same time. And I survived, Angel. I, uh, I didn't have a mental breakdown. I got close many times. Uh, uh, I had a couple really low spots, but I got through it all and emerged uh, uh, with a, uh, a, a position to be an academic as well as to be a clinician. So it's an incredible awesome. life and I'm really grateful. Awesome. Hey, uh, much, much props to you. I know not too many people can take that journey. So mm. much props to you. But let's let's back up a sec. Tell us like how or what intrigued you to get into the profession and then what uh intrigued you to go into this mental health recovery phase like what would you say yeah i'm like many people i had my own little personal journey where i realized how important health was i think a lot of people don't understand uh the importance until you have some pivotal point in our lives uh, uh so mine was in 2006 i made some very serious health changes and noticed a rapid transformation I, I really got into nutrition and exercise for the first time. Uh, I stopped using alcohol and drugs, and I really got into what some people would call recovery. That's mental health recovery, physical health recovery, spiritual recovery. And my life ha had a complete transformation. And I would say that nutrition was such a big part of it. And it led me to uh, giving people exercise advice, my first job in my new chapter was a personal trainer and I was giving people nutrition advice. And then it led to me feeling like the world was telling me what to do. It was, it was like, it was not my first choice of career. In fact, I took a nutrition class when I was an undergrad at USC in the early days and I dropped out. I dropped oh. it. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a nutrition class dropout in, uh, in the <laughs> undergrad years. I think there were just, I think it was in that just real like calorie focused era. It was about tracking and calories. That was like the major class assignment. They wanted you to weigh yourself and do all that. I just wasn't into it. Right. I had other things going on at the time, but needless to say, when I got into, uh, into wellness myself, nutrition changed my, uh, 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 skin tone and it changed the way my eyes lit up and it changed the way I connected to people and people noticed it. So I, I would say that I had one of those transformations and I said, this is going to be it. I'm going to get into nutrition and I'm going to do so in a new way. I knew that just like calories and macronutrients wasn't going to be it for me. And so I thought about how do we think about nutrition for mental health? And I started learning about this new field. Um, and I've been very fortunate to be a contributor to it. That's a, that's a beautiful thing. I, I, I love it. And like I said, I've known you for a good while. We had you on a, uh, the National Organization of Men and Nutrition. We had you on a webinar, and I, I greatly appreciate your journey because I think it's very fascinating when you find somebody like yourself. Um, I love the stories and and the fact that you, it's kind of funny that you did a nutrition course in undergrad, and then you, and then you dropped it, and then you came back. How many years afterwards would you say it 
took for you to come back to it? Like when were you an undergrad? Yeah, I would say that, yourself. Yeah, yeah. The uh, I, I am 40. So my undergrad would have been, uh, or, or I think it was around the year 2000. 2000. Right? Okay. okay. And so um, let's say that by the time I was back in a master's program for nutrition would have been 10 years later. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, like I heard Michael Jordan got kicked off his high school basketball team or dropped out or something like that. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, he got dropped. He got dropped. He got dropped. Yeah. He got dropped. So yeah, no, that's cool. Well, thank you for that. I, I, <laughs> I love it. It's pretty awesome. I mean, that's why it's great to, to hear these stories. Cause I didn't, I didn't know that I've just known you throughout the years and it's pretty, uh, pretty enlightening to see see your journey come full circuit. So I appreciate that. And I'm not that. trying to say I'm the Michael Jordan of nutrition, by the way. I'm not trying no, to say No, 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 but I, <laughs> I appreciate it. It's good. It's good. We all got a journey. I, I respect yeah, that. So, um, so yeah, what do you think in terms of the recovery field and mental health, what do you find are the, um, the benefits and the drawbacks to being in this side of the profession? Yeah. I know that I would say that there are, we, we need to be knowledgeable about the medications. We need to be knowledgeable, uh, probably also empathetic towards the situation. I also got a major in psychology, which I feel helps in working with people because we need to be able to wrap around and look at it through their eyes to try to deal with treatment. What would you, what would you say about that? Well, I would say that this emerging field of nutritional psychiatry nutritional psychology is much more uh, uh, vibrant in Australia, the UK, uh, Canada, and in South America. That's where some of the universities are doing this research. It does seem to be more well accepted in other parts of the globe, whereas in the United States, it doesn't fit into the current models that we have, right? And so it does sort of seem like this sort of renegade topic of, you know, we're using nutrition to help people with depressive symptoms. And, you know, whenever you present new ideas, people sort of look at you like, what are you, what are you talking about? That doesn't make sense. Um, you know, people seem to get it. And now we have data to understand the mechanisms when you really understand the pathophysiology of depression or the biological embedding of trauma. You start to look at body systems that are affected. And then you think about how nutrition can actually be a, a part of the solution. And so when you can break down some of the mechanisms, I think people are starting to uh, pay much more attention. And I would say that originally I came into the field trying to talk about nutrition for substance use disorder recovery. And you know, I think that uh, that's a tougher case to make than this idea of we can actually use nutrition to reduce anxiety, to reduce depressive symptoms and to help people that have a, a trauma history. And that will in turn improve substance use disorder recovery outcomes. And also focusing obviously on improving people's disordered eating and relationship with food. So it's all connected. And I think that it's, it's, a, it's a strong case to make, but the data is there. The data is there. We have seven randomized controlled trials to date to date to show that nutrition interventions, dietary interventions reduce depressive symptoms. And these are studies that don't focus on weight loss. That's that's awesome. That's awesome to hear. No, I mean it uh, we have to look at individuals at a you know from a 360 perspective and figure out ways. So the fact that you are doing this and the fact that uh other people are looking into it as a great thing. And it's just shows that uh, clearly I love the fact that we can, um, you know, just having you on can show a different dimension of the profession because, you know, we might look at clinical or we might look at food service or, um, you know, certain managerial aspects, but to see the, the profession start to eke out in this way and grab a little more in a, in a different direction is great. So thank you. I appreciate that. So yeah, and I would, I would add one more thing. A lot yeah. of the mental health professionals are moving into the nutrition space. And that's why I'm trying to tell nutritionists and dietitians, yo, we need to move into the mental health space because otherwise, you know, this, this emerging nutrition for mental health field will be taken by other providers. And I think we need to be a part of the conversation. 
We absolutely do. I think that's where, you know, everyone eats, so they're an expert, but then we have the background and, uh, you know, credential to really show our, show our stuff, show our merit. So we need to get that's in great. there and yep. I appreciate that. So awesome. So next question for you. So if you could do it all over again in your career, what would you change and what would you keep the same? Well, I'm certainly not the kind of person that lives with regrets and, you know, fantasizes about changing things or redoing things differently. You know, I, I certainly have, you know, wished I learned more about certain things along the way. I had to sort of self-teach myself uh, uh, with sort of neuroscience and understanding mental and behavioral health. But, you know, part of getting a PhD is learning how to code and do statistical analysis and run some pretty uh, uh, complicated models uh, in certain circumstances. And I think that coming into uh, the world of computer science and coding certainly had its challenges for me. And that's something that I wish I would have gotten into earlier. Obviously, the world has changed to the point where programmers are sort of, you know, kind of leading the way nowadays. And uh, I've been building an app for the last year, a nutrition for mental health app called Wise Mind Nutrition. And uh, seeing how uh, complicated uh, some of the processes are around coding and, you know, sort of wishing that I had taken some training in that earlier on so that I could just be a tech whiz. I mean, that's the one thing that really would accelerate my goals and my progress is uh, being having the capacity to do everything tech related in addition to, uh, uh, you know, the theoretical work I do in scholarly circles and the clinical work that I do that really rounds it all out. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, it's funny you said that because that's I was talking to uh, a new entry into the profession like a new dietitian, and and he's like, well, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. And I was like, well, I think the tech sector is where it's at. It's like, if you could make yeah. app, you could do things, you could really do well. And it would be helpful because, you know, unfortunately we'll have a tech person trying to come into our realm and they don't understand the things from our perspective or they're, they're looking at it and says, well, this makes sense to do this. And it's like, no, this is how our consumers think. This is how, this is how dietitians think. So we need to design it like that. So Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. So cool. So this is going to seem a little weird to ask, but I always like to ask it. What does the future hold for you? You got your doctorate. You have a little one. Like what, what's what's in the cards for you here? Yeah, I, I do have a new uh, daughter and I'm, I'm on, you know, family first mode, which to me means a lot of work. Um, I uh, I'm going to always make sure that I'm seeing people. I do believe that to stay on the cutting edge and feel connected to the work that we do, always meeting with people one-on-one, -on -one, that's sort of my passion and, and I think my strongest skill. Um, I have moved into tech. And so there's an app, like I mentioned, called Wise Mind Nutrition, which is basically a transformative educational journey. It's a treatment program where someone could uh, be assessed for various mental health symptoms and then get some treatment based upon that. So it's not just recommending supplements and foods, but the language we use, you know, very trauma-informed, eating disorder-friendly language. And it's a full program, the equivalent of meeting with someone like me for six to eight months. Uh, all, the, all the content and everything is, is packed in there. And uh, there's a, a place for people to log their food and have it be non-mathematic. So it's not about calories or macros. It's more about qualitative components to eating, thinking about hunger, fullness, bringing in spirituality, meditation, et cetera. And there's a free version of the app that's coming out in a few weeks. So it'll be a, a place for people to just come check it out, use the food log, watch a couple videos, get a couple cooking instructions and just get a feel for why is my nutrition. It's sort of like a uh, futuristic nutrition for mental health education that comes with a big warm hug. Awesome. I love it. Well, if you don't mind and you wanted to send it when it's the free version, I can put it up and we'll tag it and get some, get some uses in there for you. So yeah, definitely. I love it. Yeah. There's a sign up on wisemindnutrition.com. I'd love to get the link in uh, the show notes for you and yeah, yeah spread absolutely. the word. Appreciate okay. it. Okay. Beautiful. I'm all about spreading the love. So it's good to hear. Hmm. Um, so yeah. So the final question for you, any words of wisdom, for the next generation of dietitians? Yeah. What would you say? 
I get a chance to talk to dietitians a lot and uh, recently did some presentations. And I think, I think the thing that we really need to think about is nuance and thinking outside of the box and not getting uh, uh, lost in what we call campsite culture, where, you know, this, this group sees it this way, this group sees it this way. I'm really trying to encourage dietitians to think about how different theories intersect to think about uh, things on a continuum, things on a spectrum, think about very nuanced ways as opposed to falling victim to groupthink, which is that, oh, we as dietitians think this way, or, or these types of dietitians think this way. It's really important to study what other practitioners uh, uh, study and their viewpoints, and to be very curious about viewpoints that are different from your own. It's very important to read stuff that you don't agree with and be curious about it as opposed to falling into, you know, like a, a, a silo, right? Where you have discipline bias and everyone in our group, we see it this way. And this is our, this is our click and other people are, are other, they're not welcome here. I think that energy has led uh, our field to be very uh, um, toxic for lack of a better term. And I really believe that the key to future uh, for dietitians is out of box thinking, creative, nuanced ways of seeing problems and developing clinical intuition and deep insight that's based more than just on manual based training, but on actual lived experience. Awesome. Well, with that being said, I greatly appreciate your time. You are, uh, you know, I've, I've been enjoying watching your journey. I, uh, Love the fact that you got a little one there. So, you know, we'll, uh, we'll definitely circle back and I will, uh, I will put your, your app or give me the link. We'll, we'll spread it out there and then, uh, we'll have you on for another episode when we, uh, release the hot sauce after dark. So, <laughs> Sounds good. so, well, cool. With that being said, thank you very much and, uh, have a great rest of your day. Just thank you. I'm also on the platform Buy Me A Coffee. This is a platform that allows creators like myself to create content and get rewarded in a variety of payments. I've decided to do it via coffee. So if you'd like to buy me a coffee, you can do so. And if you want to send one to the individual I'm interviewing, send it to me and I will send it their way. With that being said, thank you very much for being here with us today. I hope you really enjoyed the video and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.